Hi guys, what's up? This is Sasha for President back with another video. I do apologize for my long hiatus on this channel, but if you follow me outside of this channel, you know that I actually have multiple YouTube channels and in particular, um, two are doing exceptionally well and I'm very proud of it. And as with anything, once you see how much money you can really make on, on this YouTube platform, you get caught up in the lust for ad revenue and, you know, sometimes you lose sight of what brought you to the platform in the first place. And I was making so much money over there and I have so much more subscribers over there that I was like, forget this channel. I mean, I'm just being honest. Um, but there's something about this channel that I absolutely love and that's the commentary and freedom of expression. This is my only channel that I have of commentary and stuff like that. So now that my other channels is doing so well and are at a financial level where I can actually hire help and not be as involved, I'd like to get back to this channel where I can focus on the content that I like and not worry about money. You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate all of you that are still subscribed to this channel. That means so, so much to me. You guys just don't even know. And that's why I don't want to waste any more time okay you guys so today i would like to discuss wendy williams and this entire cheating scandal slash abuse slash health issues slash drug addiction scandal this news has been all over every news outlet every social media platform so there's no need for me to go in depth about every little thing however um basically for the last two years wendy williams has been claiming sporadic inconsistencies with her graves disease medication and that it's causing her to stumble over her words and faint on camera at the exact same times coincidentally uh wendy's husband kept being outed for his long-term relationship with a younger woman also known as sharina hudson or nikki hudson so now it came out that wendy's husband's other woman was pregnant and that rumor is what had wendy on the longest hiatus claiming it was all about her graves disease but now it's right right before the woman gave birth Wendy came on her show and she said, oh, you know, she's been living in this sober house and coincidentally it's a sober house for men, uh, by the way. And she said that she was living there to deal with unresolved issues of her previous cocaine addiction. She never said that she was currently addicted to anything. She never said that she was even being treated for anything. She went on to talk about how these people, these men that are there, um, they share their stories and she listened to them. So basically she can't listen to them anymore and watch them watch TV. And then she goes to bed by 10 o'clock. That's what she said. Nothing about it really was about herself. So I found that very interesting. Then while all of that was going on, her former co-host from her previous radio show, Charlemagne of The Breakfast Club, almost every day anything comes out about Wendy Williams, he's going on and on on his show about how dangerous Wendy Williams' husband is and how he fears for Wendy Williams' life. So we, the public, are paying attention to all of this. And despite how some people may feel about Wendy Williams, her on-screen persona, how ruthless she can be in her reporting, um, a lot of people actually have been feeling sorry for Wendy because, I mean, human to human, a cheating scandal, alleged abuse, battling Graves disease, as well as a drug addiction for anybody that is a lot. So people have been very empathetic and sympathetic to Wendy. And I mean, don't get me wrong. On the other hand, there are people who are saying that this is her karma, but for the most part, I've been seeing nothing but positivity and people saying at the very least, regardless of what they think about her, they hope that she gets away from her husband and is safe. With that said, all this stuff about her husband has been coming out and his character and what type of person he is. And um, there's a lot of different rumors about the staff at the Wendy show disliking him and about some people witnessing actual abuse. His mother came out and said that she even witnessed him being abusive toward Wendy Williams. So that's why a lot of people are like, you know what? We could put our feelings about Wendy to the side and focusing on her husband and her leaving her husband basically so now this woman the mistress has given birth to the baby and it said that oh wendy 
took off her wedding ring on her way to the rehab place but then immediately afterwards she checked herself out of the rehab place and then they found her randomly on the street somewhere drunk out of her mind and they had to take her to the hospital to get her stomach pumped and get her in fluids and stuff like that they said she had a complete meltdown i am not buying half of this and i want you guys to hear me out I've worked in media, journalism, and entertainment industry. I know how these things work. And I'm not saying I'm an expert or anything. It's just some things were a red flag to me. One, all of this stuff is going on. Wendy Williams is a very smart, very sharp woman. And I understand sometimes even the, the people who appear to be the strongest can still be very weak people. Um, because, again, we're all human at the end of the day. However... Wendy is very adamant about standing by her man, about having her ring on. Just when people think she's not going to have her ring, she shows up on her show flaunting her ring and saying that she's not going anywhere. Very, she feels very strongly about not going anywhere. And she was like, don't ask me anything about my marriage until you see this gone. And this is not going to be gone in this lifetime is her exact words in this lifetime. So that's pretty strong words for somebody to be going through all of this stuff that we are feeling sorry for her for and she doesn't really seem faced but then I had to put my thinking cap on and I'm thinking like every time she is going to this rehab place which is very close to her studio it's just over the bridge in Queens and her studio is in Manhattan so it, it doesn't take long for her to get to this rehab place. It's a short drive. She's all dolled up at her show. She has a full glam squad five days a week. They do hair, makeup, nails, everything. Five days a week that she films her show. So why is it that conveniently the paparazzi, the Daily Mail, who's ever following her, is immediately after she leaves her show, her hair is completely disheveled every single time. Her face looks a somber mess every single time. You would think she just got into a fist fight or just stepped out of a wind tunnel or something like that. It's not making sense to me. I understand you're going to this rehab place and you may not want to look like queen of the world when you're going there being amongst the quote unquote people, but at least look decent, especially when you just were completely glammed in hair and makeup from your show because by her own admission she leaves the show goes to a couple of meetings and goes directly to the rehab or leaves her show and goes directly to rehab and a lot of times they caught her going straight from the show to the rehab place and when she gets out of the van her hair is all over the place so that she's perfectly caught looking disheveled they know exactly when she's going to be there and everything. And I know some people say, oh, well, you know, that's because they're following her around and stuff. She's going to a random rehab place in Queens. It's not a celebrity facility. How did they know she was even there? Previously, the Daily Mail reported that Wendy was down in Florida at a rehab facility. My thing is, if everybody thought Wendy was at home, and on hiatus dealing with her husband or her Graves' disease, how did they know she was in Florida? Nobody else seemed to knew, know that, not even her staff. So how did they know she was at a facility in Florida? It's just not making sense to me, especially when they're so adamant about showing proof. They, they have receipts like crazy on their website, but they have not one receipt to that allegation. They only have her coming out of a CVS. And this is just my theory. I don't believe she was at a rehab in Florida. I do believe she went to take a break and get herself together down in Florida, but not for a rehab facility. When she came clean on her show about being in rehab, she never mentioned the Florida place. She only mentioned this sober living place. And that's because I think that the rehab story was a planted story on purpose it's a setup and I know some people are gonna think that this is crazy but you have to think about PR moves media spins and crisis management Wendy Williams her husband is in this major 
scandal that's all over the media. How can you combat that as a crisis management team? How can you combat that as Wendy Williams' PR? Everybody's been saying that Wendy is falling out on her show and stuttering her words because I think she's back on drugs. A lot of people rush straight to that. So why not play into that? Because if Wendy Williams' husband really is doing these things with this other woman, which it seems like that is true. If Wendy is unfazed by it, why just be unfazed by it when you can make money off of it? And I know this sounds sick and I know this sounds far-fetched, but you have to think how the entertainment industry works, how celebrities spend things in their favor. They always turn lemons into lemonade. And they're always trying to find a way, if they're smart, to profit off of their pain or even the assumption that they have pain. All of these rumors and Wendy is not saying I'm not speaking on my marriage. No, she's going hard and heavy about how great of a guy her husband is and about how she's madly in love with him. And she's showing old pictures of this is who I married. She's saying more than we, you know, people have problems. I'm not speaking on my marriage. She's going hard. Like, look, my man is everything. To me, that sounds different than somebody who's being cheated on and they just don't want to talk about it. That sounds more of somebody who's being cheated on. They know about it. And they, they're cool with it. So much so that in the midst of all this stuff about her husband being out there, she is defending him and speaking highly of him. Who does that if somebody's cheating on you? So that's one part. I believe the story about the rehab in Florida is fake. They never showed her coming in or going out of the rehab never and coincidentally her parents live in Florida so I believe Wendy was down there visiting her parents and the whole rehab story was a setup for this current story it's all a distraction to take away from what her husband is doing and the reporting on her husband so first is the rehab down in Florida AKA staying at the parents' house, purposely get photographed coming out of the CVS, again, looking disheveled. Fast forward to now, Wendy is having these little spouts on her show, off and on. It's coming out that this woman is pregnant. Wendy's taking little breaks. Then Wendy comes out and says she has been in sober living after the show, never admits to any wrongdoing on her part. Never says that she's there being treated. Everything she said sounded like a person who's there doing research. She said that she's there listening to their stories, learning about them, thinking about how when she had her cocaine addiction, she never went to a treatment facility. Everything was about how she's listening to them and about the type of people who are in the facility. Smelly boys, they watch soccer all day, things like that. That sounds journalistic to me. I'm familiar with that. That's something a journalist or a writer and author would do. Go to a place for research, listen to their stories and gather information. Go there to gain sympathy and empathy and put yourself in their shoes and things like that so that you can better write the story that you're trying to tell. To me, this is one big narrative being told or being painted. Fast forward, either the day of or the day after the, the lady gave birth. Uh, when that story came out, another story comes out saying that Wendy was um, caught out in the street. She checked herself out of sober living and was caught out somewhere in between the sober living place and on her way to her house, completely drunk out of her mind. So much so that they had to take her to a hospital and get her stomach pumped. And get fluids in her system. The Daily Mail has been following Wendy stalking her and her husband. At no point did they catch any photos of Wendy leaving sober living. Wendy being drunk. Nor did they catch any photos of Wendy in or out of the hospital. No one has a statement from any hospital staff. No one has any statement from anyone who allegedly found her drunk. Nothing. I'm just not buying it. 
This was a leaked story. Again, you have to understand media, media spins in particular, PR moves. So then they catch Wendy with her ring. And just as I thought, it was confirmed. Wendy says something about she's working on a book. And I'm telling people that I know I'm like, didn't I say that? Didn't I say it sounded like she was there getting research for a book? It sounded like an author move or a journalist move. This whole thing was a big facade, a distraction from what is going on between her and her husband and her husband's other woman. But at the end of the day, a lot of people are like, even if all of this is true and Wendy knows about her husband and all this stuff, Wendy's a successful woman. Why would she put up with her husband cheating on her or being with this other woman? Wendy can do better. And especially when they say he's abusive and all of this other stuff, right? That's what a lot of people are thinking. And yesterday, I kept thinking the same thing. Why would Wendy put up with this? And then in my suggested uh, feed on YouTube, I came across this video. It's an old video of a news clip where they're talking about Wendy Williams or Wendy Williams and her husband. I don't know if she knew about it or not, um, but it seemed like it was her husband went to one of her co-workers and tried to get somebody hired to take out Wendy Williams' rival on the radio show. This was back when Wendy had a radio show. And by take out, I mean in this woman's life. It was a very serious allegation. I heard about this way back in the day, but I never watched the news clip and I never got like explicit details. So I'm gonna play the news clip right now for you guys. And I want you guys to pay attention to this. I have the federal complaint right here in my hand. It all started as a sexual harassment lawsuit. Now it's all about murder for hire. Wendy Williams earned the title Queen of All Media with her top-rated syndicated radio show. In a federal sexual harassment lawsuit, her talent booker, Nicole Spence, claims that Wendy and her husband, Kevin Hunter, tried to hire a hitman for a rival. Defendant Hunter had asked a male employee who was working at the company at the time to help him find someone to kill rival radio personality, Tarsha Jones, also known as Miss Jones on radio station Hot 97 because he was apparently angry over some comments that Miss Jones made about his wife on the air. A spokesperson for my Hot 97 colleague, Miss Jones, says this is a very serious allegation and very unfortunate if it's true. Okay, now that you've heard that, that's very serious allegations over something as silly as he didn't like what she said about Wendy on the radio. So you want to end her life? Straight up hire a hit on her. Now, of course, Wendy and her husband denied the allegations, but why would all these different people say that that's true if it wasn't? And after this, there was a $5 million settlement. They settled out of court for $5 million. And then this is the part I never heard before that made me make this video that had me putting it all together. Listen to this second part of this news clip that I didn't even know existed and then we're really going to get into this that's not all the lawsuit also claims similarly miss spence also learned that defendant williams herself asked that same individual to help her get someone to kill her husband defendant hunter wendy's camp vehemently denies the murder for hire plots Ms. Williams and her husband, Kevin Hunter, say the allegations are absolutely and completely false. The spokesperson adds that Wendy and her husband are looking forward to putting these negative rumors to rest. As for Nicole Spence, her attorney, Ken Thompson, says he expects her to be fully vindicated in federal court. In Midtown, Lisa Evers, Fox 5 News. Okay, did you hear that? They said that Wendy turned around and tried to hire the same people to take out her husband. So why in the world would an allegation like that be presented? That's a very, very strong allegation. Also, of course, they would deny the whole thing. Who would admit that they had a murder for hire plot? Who would admit that? Especially since Wendy herself even said her husband back then was a street guy. I don't know what he does now. So anybody from the streets or anything like that, they don't want to get the police involved and all of that stuff. They handle things themselves. They handle it in a street way, which brings me to my whole 
awakening in this thing. After I listened to that second part of the news clip, my whole mind was blown and everything started to make sense. They say he's been dealing with this woman for over 10 years. He bought her a house, a condo, several businesses, trying to get her different aspirations off the ground. So basically, he's taken the money from Wendy and funded this other woman's lifestyle. That's pretty bold. And a lot of people were saying, why would Wendy put up with this? Wendy seems like a very strong woman. Wendy, she's telling people all the time about leaving people, getting a divorce, not putting up with certain things. So why would she be putting up with this? And some people say it's because her husband is abusive. But then when I heard that second part of that clip, the news clip, I think it's much more than that. Wendy tried to hire the same people to take out her husband. Do you understand what that means? Wendy tried to have her husband murdered. Think about that. This is a street guy. And your wife tried to have you murdered. Even if you weren't a street guy, if somebody tried to have you murdered, what would you do? Especially if that's your wife. You're going to just stay with that person? Most people would say absolutely not. However, if you listen to the news clip, all of this happened right when Wendy got her deal for television. She was already successful on the radio and she just landed her deal for television. That means a lot of money was about to start rolling in. So you find out that your wife is plotting to kill you. Instead of divorcing your wife and you're a street guy, what do you do? You say, oh, you want to try to kill me? Oh, I'm going to show you. You stay with her. You make yourself executive producer of all of her stuff, which he is. His name is on everything regarding her business. Whether he's doing anything for her business or not, his name is on everything. It looks like to me, Wendy is in debt to her husband. That is what he's holding over her head. I heard a lot of people say, what does he have on her like that where she wouldn't leave him? Uh, hello? It's right here. She tried to have him killed. So that would make sense that he's punishing her. That would make sense that he's put his name in all her business ventures and he's just spending and spending and spending her money. Every time I see him, he's head to toe in some kind of designer. His girlfriend, she has a bunch of designer stuff. She has nearly a million dollar house and now she got a condo in Manhattan. She's driving around in luxury vehicles and stuff like that. He has a, he's been photographed in a Rolls Royce truck, a Bentley truck. He's living the life off of Wendy Williams dime. And you know what Wendy Williams always says? She doesn't go anywhere. She doesn't do anything. She's at home watching television. She goes to bed early. So yeah, you try to kill me. You're going to work. I'm going to take all your money and I'm going to do whatever I want to do with whoever I want to do it with. And I don't care anything about your feelings. That explains why everybody says he talks to her terribly. That explains why people say he's very abusive to her because he doesn't care. There are some people that's abusive to their spouse behind closed doors. He's boldly abusive to her in front of other people. That's a person who doesn't care. And at first I was looking at him as this terrible person and I still think he's not the best person. But I'm looking at Wendy Williams very differently also, very differently. Because if he had the balls enough to try to take somebody's life over comments about his wife, that means he's defending her, not excusing his behavior. But you will go to that length to murder somebody over comments and then for your wife to turn around and try to have you murdered when you were defending her, no matter how wrong murder is. That says a lot. So I don't know what he did for Wendy to want to take him out. Possibly because his thug life or whatever, all of those allegations uh, of him trying to take this woman out. She didn't want to get caught up in that and she didn't want to mess with her career. Maybe that's why she wanted to take her husband out. I don't know. But what I do know is this is what came out. There's court documents about it. So all of this is making sense to me now. I don't know it for fact, but this is my theory. 
Kevin Hunter is punishing Wendy Williams for basically trying to put a hit out on him. And Wendy Williams is stuck because she's now indebted to him for that. He's going to make her pay for that. And it reminds me of 50 Cent and Ja Rule. So many people said 50 Cent is ruthless. Why he's always going after Ja Rule even all these years later? A lot of people don't understand why 50 Cent is always making fun of Ja Rule. Why he's trying to stop Ja Rule's money. Why, you know, he tried to end Ja Rule's career. All of this stuff. People say it's petty. He bought the first two rows or the front row seats to Ja Rule's show so that it could look empty. Why would he go through those extremes and all this? People say it's bullying. But you have to think about it. Yes, 50 Cent looks like the bad guy. It looks so mean what he's doing. But when you learn why he's doing it, you're kind of like, oh. And what we've learned is that Ja Rule conspired with a known hitman in New York to shoot up 50 Cent. The, nine, the shot nine times thing, Ja Rule was partially responsible for that. So that's why 50 Cent feels like you try to take my life. I'm never going to forgive you for that. So I'm going to make your life miserable. And it looks to me that that's exactly what Wendy Williams' husband is doing. And I didn't pay attention to it before. That's because I didn't even see the actual news clip. I just heard about this years ago about the hit on Miss Jones because I knew who Miss Jones was from the radio. But I did not know the second part to that. Wendy Williams tried to hire a hitman for her husband. That is something to think about. So that's making me look at this whole story totally differently. I no longer feel like, oh, you know, Wendy is going to get herself recovery and leave her husband and all that stuff. She's adamant about staying with her husband. And to me, it looks like because she's indebted to her husband. And I believe all of this recovery stuff and all of that stuff was a great PR slash crisis management move to deflect from everything that her husband is doing and put all the blame on Wendy. And Wendy used this as an opportunity to make more money, not just for her, but for her husband. So all of that, I'm in sober living and all that, that's about to be a book and possibly a lifetime special. Because now that I just thought about it, Wendy is very cool with Lifetime. She executive produced the Aaliyah story, no matter how bad it was. She has a very close relationship with them. She talks about them all the time on her show. I would not be surprised if we see the Wendy Williams story. And anybody who worked in PR or the entertainment industry, you probably already see this for what it is because I just saw a bunch of red flags. The media is saying one thing, but what I'm seeing is not matching up. It was not making sense to me at all. And now it's like, it's, it's all just, the picture is painted much clearer now. If you guys have a different theory, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions on this entire situation because it's so many different things and layers to this whole story. We got Graves disease. We got drug addiction. We have another woman. We have an illegitimate baby. We have her son, maybe like 1920. She has her talk show. People are talking about that's in jeopardy. All of this stuff. She's losing it. All these hiatuses, blah, blah, blah. You know, people from her staff are, were dropping like flies. So what better way than to create this whole sympathy thing toward her? It gets people to, you know, get on her side and it gets people to not talk so much about her husband and put some of the focus on her. And it makes way for a book. And she because it, she's doing it right in the middle of the crisis, she'll probably get more money for the book. Also, it's smart. It's all strategic. But again, it's just my theory. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you all for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.